Then I look at all the great problems the human race is facing. Terrorism, war, decimation of species and more. And it seems that all our solutions could be too little too late. How did we get like this? And where do we go from here? In the spirit of purification, we're talking about the fourth part of the process, the fourth part of the creative process. So we've had the experience of blessing and allowing the fire of heaven to come into our heart to let the waters be stirred. In the beginning was the word, and the word was out without form. And the Spirit of God <laughs> touched the face of the waters. That sound like the first day or what? The Spirit of God touches the waters. The waters of your heart are stirred by the Spirit. And I'm not talking about some imaginary God blowing on the surface of your heart. Remember the story of the guy who um, laid the, the, the Bethesda pool for all those years, yeah. waiting for the angels to stir the waters? I love that story because it's, it's as if there's something outside yourself. You're waiting for just the right moment when it has to be your waters that are stirred by yours, the spirit that you're connected to. So anyway, that's what happens on the first day of the spirit of blessing. And we have the, our, the waters and the air coming together on day two with understanding so that we have passion and vision, clarity, and a sense of taking action. This is about direction. This is where the mind gives the direction and the physical takes it and is diligent. This is a powerful day, day three. It's in the, like I said, it's when the water, the dry land appears from the waters. If you read it in the Bible, it um, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but because it says like the water, the land gathers together, but really it's the waters that gather together. In, in real life, right? I mean, if it rains, water pools together, right? The land is so what does that imply? It implies that our passions are focused so that something can happen, so the dry land can appear. It's not just, it's not about something showing up without all this preceding it. So now we're on day four, the fourth part of the creative process. This is also, uh, again, in the attuning process, this is the experience spiritual and the physical and this is might sound funny to say it's about the spirit of purification because we're talking about our body we're talking about the earth we're talking about spirit but realistically this is where um, we all of a sudden see what's happening in the earth is connected to something much bigger than what we thought in the story in Genesis, it is about the lights. The lights show up. All of a sudden, there's lights in the heaven, and it's like, oh, <laughs> that's what this day is about. Oh, I had no idea that what I'm doing, what I'm experiencing, is connected to something much larger and may have implications in a much larger scheme. So in this piece that David has written in this Tumen card, it's like so much Terrorism, war, decimation of species. How did it get like this? Where do we go from here? And I pray to regain our kindness, our care for others, and for this planet. In, this is in um, when we these the, there's the virtues and the spirits. So the virtues are blessing, understanding, taking action. The virtue here is fulfilling mission. Fulfilling your mission. And you cannot be small when you're doing that. You cannot think of yourself without having some reference to the invisible thing that stimulated you from the beginning. This is your animating force. This is life. This is love, the spirit of love that's animating everything. It's animating those beings. I mean, when you talk about those sentient beings are creating form because they are, it is the same universal spirit that's moving through them, just as a bee. And so we have that moving through us, and then we have this field of understanding where our, we're realizing, hey, I, I feel this and I think this, and these capacities are part of who I am. These capacities are essential for me to do, it, do what I need to do. 
Anybody else besides me wish you could eliminate your emotional realm for a while? <laughs> I have spent days thinking, what were you thinking in this design? I, it's just too much to have this feeling. I have too, too deep a heart. I care too much. I hurt too badly. I mean, it is an awful way to live, but it, am I the only person who's ever felt that? No. <laughs> I thought it was because I was oh, yeah. Italian. <laughs> I do sometimes think, like Maureen and I have this, we're very similar in many ways, but our hearts operate very differently. Like, I really feel hurt and I feel grief in a way that's just not the way she does. And so I think, well, why did I choose to be built like this? But some of the advantage is, not only do I feel it deeply, I sense my connection to things so deeply. Yeah. It is, it's a privilege, it's a powerful thing to know. But you have to know it in connection to the truth of yourself, not in connection to what's happening out there. Otherwise, it is a burden. It is a burden to have deep emotional feeling if you don't know why you have it. If it, it just becomes like, well, let me start drinking at noon. Yes. I mean, that, that, that's, 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 like that. It's like, where are we, when, I have to say, when you were talking about the beer, I was thinking a little bit about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure we go into that trailer. We'll have to the RD later. It was six times to help you for the rest of the year. No, I have talked somewhere. Well, I am not, um, in some ways, I'm making light about it. I don't, but I, I do know there, there is pleasure in the relaxation of those kinds of things. But I have at times thought, I find those kinds of things will numb down the way I feel and the way I think, and that I just don't have to see it all. I don't have yes. to feel it. It quiets your mind. It numbs my mind. <laughs> and it also, that's, that's a lot of drink. Sometimes my emotional realm becomes. Uh, calms down, but then it also goes to the even deeper feeling because it's now vulnerable. So yeah. it's a man-made interference in the process. Oh, okay. And I I am not cursing anybody who does that in the middle of the day because I certainly find there are times you you're laughing at this. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you and I had a drink over the lunch hour, you don't have to tell them no. <laughs> <laughs> mission. Whether or not you have some memory of why you decided to be on this earth, you have a purpose. I happen to very viscerally know that I came with a purpose. And when I was looking at the things earlier about taking action, where I need more obedience, where I need more diligence, where I need more direction, um, one of them was was about this very thing. Let's ask the question, where do you want to be in a year? I've never asked myself that kind of question. Because I'm a very, in the moment, I, I just took care of things, I you know. But the idea of visioning and, and dreaming about it, but perhaps it's age, you know, where you start realizing, I don't have 60 years to, you know, to do whatever it is that's left of my life. My friend Ruth Buckingham says she does. She's older than me. When she turned 60, she said, yeah, I hit the halfway mark. <laughs> I just don't think like that, but maybe I should. So I wrote down, what will it take to get you where you want to go? And I need to be diligent in asking this question at every step. Is this helpful for what I want to accomplish with my life? Is it accurate? Is it life-giving? Is it strengthening? And is it wise? Those are questions that anybody can ask at any time, but I, I propose when you are thinking about your, your fulfilling your mission, you have to get higher or broader to realize that the, the choices you're making are setting you up for victory of whatever it is, if you're consciously choosing to do things that will get you to victory. And there are ways that I've gotten lazy, there are ways that I've let other people tell me how I should be. And I, I think we all have ways of wanting to fit in and creating a culture that says, let's just keep the peace or let's not have it be too 
spiritual work should always be easy or should always be um, neat and tidy. Neat and tidy, and um, everybody should be getting along or something. Yeah. And I have to say, I've had the most strenuous growing pains in the last year, and I thought I was over them all. I really did. The um, we just had an event at Sunrise Ranch. It was a group called Tribalize, and they um, they were planning on bringing 400 people. They were incredibly disorganized. They we didn't sign the contract until half the people were on the property. So they were really they kept demanding. Th and then they, I think they had a feeling that if they kept showing up, we couldn't take them off. <laughs> you know, like they they. They hadn't signed a contract. People were already staying on the property, and you know they they thought they'd have 400 people, so there'd be all this money involved and stuff like that. Well, I'm bringing it up because it was one of the um, events we had there that was like, let's not ever do that again. You know that kind of experience. Well, one of the people from Tribalize wrote David an email, and it said, "You guys are not living up to ecological." And social <laughs> victory. I mean, there are ways that you could be leading this organization that um, would reveal true leadership in the up and coming evolutionary <laughs> culture. And his answer back to them, as he was being a little bit of a smart aleck back, was Oh, please let me know where there's a community that's been around for 72 years that's multi dimensional that has these systems in place so we can learn from them. Yeah. Multi generational. Uh, didn't I say multi generational? Yeah. You said dimension. Well, well, multi, thank you. Sorry, multi. Well, it is multi generational. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Multi generational. Yeah. Like, show me where the, this organization is. We really want to be um, being evolutionary leaders. And of course, the person said, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, and I'm not saying this to pat Sunrise on the back, but what I am bringing it forth in that. There is discomfort as you are emerging into your where you're going. Mm -hmm. You know, ask any woman who's delivered a baby that there there's some effort and pain involved in the process. And even if you haven't had a baby, you've birthed something where you had this wonderful idea way over here in blessing, and you had a great plan created when your mind and your heart were fully in focus. You took action. And then you fell on your stinking face. <laughs> okay, I know I'm the only one who's ever done that. <laughs> but like I saw, I moved to Colorado to practice with this woman I went to chiropractic school with. We, went, we were in spiritual classes together. We didn't bother signing a contract. Yeah. Uh, not necessary because we had the we knew what we were about and we had a total understanding. I've known her since college, knew her for 10, 15 years, and I took the I moved from my family, from my practice. I've been practicing in New York for six and a half years. Squat. Um, oh boy. Within a year, sport. I lost money. We you know, all kinds of people got involved. But it was my emergence because I realized how stupid I was for one thing. But secondly, I saw that I could not be my full self coming into the context that she had set up. And I I decided I'm starting, I will have my own practice. I didn't know that I'd never done that before. In New York, I was an associate. I had someone help me build a practice. I was very busy, but I'd never done it on my own. And I thought I'll, I could work at Safeway and making up, I'm a very frugal person, but I'm moving forward. And like the whole inside of me, once I made that step, went from terror to power. And relaxation, I mean fear to relaxation and joy. I had no idea if it was gonna work, but if I hadn't emerged and fallen on my face through that, I would never have known that my mission was fulfillable in a different kind of plan. I wouldn't have seen that this got me here, and I now need to be going somewhere else. I know it's a, not a necessary part of the story, but okay. a year ago, this woman was in prison. <laughs> because she was 
She also was a drug addict. Oh, and then she lost her license, and then she tried to run over a police officer with a car because she got it. So, I, you know, it's not one of those, and eh, 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 I win. But there's some part of the story that goes, well, I guess I wasn't supposed to be working with her, you know? And also, this part of the story where this woman was backed up by almost all my friends who I really respected. Oh and I had to face them as well as her and do this knowing these people who I respected were back in her own. So there was a part of me that went, does it matter? It hurts a bit, but it matters. It doesn't matter that um, this whole thing feels scary because I was relying on this form and this one doesn't have that support system in place. I had enough awareness because I went high. Yeah. I went into a place where I thought, I know I have something to do that's much greater than, like, maybe this was to get me to Colorado and get me out of New York and not really about the practice. Yeah, exactly. And what ended up happening was she left the practice. This was a multi, um, many, many disciplinary, multidisciplinary Clinic. It was one of the first in the country. Oh. Dentists, psychotherapists, chiropractors, medical doctors, colon therapies, oh. um, craniosacrotherapists, massage therapists. We were all in the same building. And um, so I came to be part of that. And within two years, I was there practicing by myself with that. that and you know, it's not about the victory of it, I'm talking about the process. We're on day four here. We're on fulfilling mission. We're on purification. Spirit of purification is about this is coming to me, and how do I lift it up and make it be of service and be? And I'm not talking about being spiritually um, a good girl. I'm talking about fulfilling my mission, fulfilling the purpose I'm on earth for. It's not about practicing with this woman, and it's not about being embarrassed that the practice didn't work. It's not about losing all the money. It's not about that. It's about I have a sense that my purpose is about reminding every person I get to meet that they are divine, they have value, they are magnificent. You can do that working at Safeway. Yeah. You can do that being a mom and not having to leave the house because you can reach out to the whole world through what's in front of you. There are times that the only way you will know, the only way you can get through what it is you're working with is to realize that it's a focus point for something much bigger. Like anybody had a situation in their relationship that they realized after it was all over that this is a pattern in every stinking relationship in the world? Like a conflict between a man and a woman or somebody, a person violates your friendship in a way that you think that I can never be friends with this person again. And you realize that's the state of the world. People are doing that all over the place. And how you handle it is a radiant focus into it in a creative and loving way. Doesn't mean you have to stay in it and say, well, suffer through this for the cosmic pattern. But it's how do you stay in your integrity and in whatever it is that's right in front of you. Stay in your integrity, be of service, let love radiate without concern for how the form looks. There is a very unique gift that each one of you in this room has to give to each one of us in this room. Have you identified it? Is anybody good? I'm going to pick on you, Mr. O'Shannon. Okay. okay. <laughs> How many people have known David for more than a day? How many have known him for more than a year? Okay. Irv, what would you say is one of David's gifts? Oh, he's very single-minded in his passion. Okay. Very. Who else raised their hand? Phyllis, what would you say is one of his love? Uh, what about his love? Everybody loves. What's specific about him? I guess just his largeness of spirit. Yes. And what experiences he's had along the way and, and saw through them. Mr. Maureen, you got one? I have, yep. 
with, with all the, David lives at 100 Wild House, for those who don't know, and for all the things that have gone on at, uh, in that area, David has stayed, stayed true to his vision all the way through to now. For I don't know how many years, I know I'm, I've been part of this program for 40 years and you were already well established. So, so that's a gift. That so whether or not you see yourself that way, you are delivering that gift into the world and it is changing the world. Well, I'm glad you know, but most people, some people don't know. They don't know they're having that kind of impact. How many people here know more? Oh yeah. How many know him for more than a day? How many know him for more than a year? Okay. What would you say is one of the gifts he brings into the world? Specifically, uniquely his. The, uh, how he comes across with his energy and love and peace and and how he wants to make sure that you are in tune with yourself and and the whole I don't know how to explain it. I'm very French. Well then next time don't waste your Because how he makes me feel. And more. how does he make you feel? How he makes me feel. He makes me feel that I can do something for myself and better myself. Inspires you? Yes. Thank you. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh, she had to drag it out of me. No, but I want to say why I'm doing it. I know. Because, oh, I love you because you're wonderful. That's, everybody's wonderful. Deeper. Yeah. It's not even deeper, it's accurate. Yeah. Let's be specific about, if you can't be specific about what his gift is, you will be in denial of how specific your gift is. Mm -hmm. And you will, like, oh. you will end up <laughs> to doing this kind of, um, what was that? Fluffy. Well, fluffy is one thing, but it would be, a, for me, it's a generic kind of loving that doesn't penetrate and doesn't fulfill your mission. You need to be paying attention. I loved what some of the people said when they said where they needed more obedience, was paying attention to the impulses that come because yeah. they're coming to you for delivery from you into your world because nobody else can deliver it like you. Even the dang sprayer. I mean, if you don't turn off the sprayer, um, you constantly will be in a house of people getting sprayed by the sprayer, right? <laughs> right? Right. right. <laughs> when Phil Richardson comes to my house, he always puts the sprayer on. And I never use the sprayer unless I've washed down the whole sink and I've got the... <laughs> and so, like, I'll go to do something and, it'll <laughs> and I'll look at it and he goes, oops. <laughs> It's not, it certainly doesn't upset me as much as it just like fulfills you. <laughs> Specificity. Spirit is specific as is the earth is specific. And I just, I really want to emphasize that in the spirit of purification, there's ownership of the penetration because you have the vision and the expansion. That sounds a little like song, isn't it? I want to encourage you to realize that you are giving gifts that people see that you might not see, know you're doing. That's one. I want you to realize you have gifts to give that you have not been afraid to deliver because you might stand out and be special. I want you to realize that you are being gifts, being given gifts by people 
that need to be acknowledged so that they know they're part of your team. I want you to realize that your gift plus this gift creates a field where another gift will come forth. Are we getting the picture, people? Yes.